Hi, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this video, we'll go through how to match grade your HDRI to your footage and just double check that the colors are matching. So I've opened Photoshop, but you can use pretty much any other image editing software. I'm just using Photoshop because it's probably what most people have. So if I just go File, Open, and you have the files from the previous ones that we've done. So we've got the Tripod No Sun, and we've just got the Stitch No Tripod. So you can pick and choose which one you want to bring in. I'm going to bring in the, uh, the Stitched Tripod No Sun and select Open. It doesn't matter so much because you can pick any one and follow through, depending on which one you want to use. So I'm going to right click and duplicate my background layer straight away. Select OK. I'm going to hide it. So now we've got our HDRI in with no sun. I'm also going to bring in the plate reference. I'll go File, Open. I'll go to my HDRI file and you should have a plate ref. It should be Chair BG01. I'll select Open. I select OK. So I'm just going to select all, edit, copy. Then I'll go over to my HDRI stitched, select edit, and I'll paste. So now we have our plate ref on our HDRI. And we can just select it and we can move around and we can see that where we have filmed is here on this chair. So I'm just going to control T to scale this down to a relatively a close similar size and I'm going to alt middle mouse click to zoom in and I just press enter and now that's scaled down to size. So we can see straight away we've got some differences here, we've got quite a lot of difference. So in our HDRI our exposure is quite a lot higher and possibly we've got a little bit more red in here. But don't forget this is also a linear color space and our HDRI is at a linear color space as well, because I don't think PT GUI deals with color, so I think that's how it outputs it. Might be wrong, but I've always treated HDRIs as if they're in a linear color space. So I'm just gonna drag this down over the top and find a nice point where I can sort of match up the colors. So I'm gonna to go to my background copy, and I go to image, adjustments, and I'm just gonna first of all change my exposure I'm going to raise my exposure to, you can see it's not getting too much because you're not going to get exactly the same yet, but we can pick parts where we sort of, you've just got to find the right sort of level for it because we're still not at the same color. We can just change our exposure at the moment. We can sort of see, even though the colors are different, we can sort of see our exposure is, is pretty similar actually. So we'll click OK. And we zoom out and we can turn it off and we can see we've changed the exposure for the shot quite a lot. So now we kind of want to match these colors as close as we can get. So the way I do this, there are plenty of ways that you can do this, but this seems to work quite well for me and it's, it's a lot easier I find. If you don't have a Macbeth chart or anything and you're just doing it by eye, the best way to do it is just by getting your two images you want to match and putting them on top. Then we'll go to our channel editors. Now, first of all, I want to look at my red channel. So if I just select my red channel, if I deselect all these and select my red. So you should only have your red selected. So I want to, oh, it will go back to it if you select it. So I'm going to do that again. So I'll select my red channel, and you can see it's gone a grayscale because we're only viewing the red. And we can see we've got some differences between our plate. Our plate is a little bit darker. So what we can do, we can go to our image, adjustments, and select our channel mixer. And this is all we're going to use. So our output channel is red, and we're just going to use the red channel. So we can move it left and right, and you can see if we move it right, it's going to get really bright. That's because we're adding so much red, it's going to just be like Mars. So we just want to play this slider until we sort of get a very similar tone. It's not exact, but it's almost disappeared on that edge. It's going to be a little bit blurry, but so I'm going to click OK. Once you've got it quite close, just select OK. And now you've edited the red channel on that. 
So we're going to go through and do the green next. So select the green one and deselect the red. And you can see it's actually not that far off. So we'll go back to our image, adjustments, channel mixer. We'll change our output uh, channel to green. And what I'll do, I'll just slide it all the way out so it's out of its set. Then I'll just gradually slide it up until I can see it sort of matching. And it's at 100%, which is what it was. And I think just leaving the green channel at 100% is probably spot on. So I'm just going to actually leave that, I'll leave it at 100%. Then I go to my blue channel. We see we've got some slight differences here. So I'll go image adjustments, channel mixer. Then I'll change my output channel to blue. Then I'll just pull it all the way off. Then I'll slowly, gradually slide it and look at my image. And I just want to keep doing it until that sort of edge almost disappears or as close as. So that looks pretty close. The only difference is we've got a bit of blur. So if we select OK now, we can zoom out. And let's just select RGB. So now if we move our image around, we can actually see we've got a really, we've got it really close, like more than I actually expected. If we look at our slats, they're pretty much in the same place. And if we zoom out, you would almost think that maybe that might be a, uh, a clipping from this. We've got very similar grading here. There are some slightly dark places, but that's probably to be expected. So we're only worrying about the colors. So if we look at our shadows, they're looking really close. So we're pretty much done now. We've used our plate reference to sort of grade this in Photoshop. Like I said, you can use any imaging editing software as long as you have a channel mixer and you can isolate each RGB values. And yeah, we're pretty much done with this HGRI now. Um, our next step was just to bring it into 3D and um, test it out, put in our CG light. So yeah, um, so if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.